I'm Margaret and welcome to Carver Hub's second broadcast of the new school year. So in this broadcast, we'll be showcasing three different segments. Our first segment will be on the election, our second will be on Halloween, and our third will be on Intersex Awareness Day. Okay, so my first question is, um, how did you vote this year? I voted this year, me and my mom, we kind of did it together as a group so we can compile our thoughts together as a teamwork because she was like she wanted Trump out so we we're just like hey we both want to Trump out this year because he was messing up the economy so we we're just like hey let's work together as mom and daughter this year because it's my first time voting and she did it for a long time so we we're just like hey let's vote this year together so remember we're done voting and so she took my ballot in the year. Um, well, I voted, or I'm not, I haven't voted yet, but I'm going to be filling out my ballot and dropping it off at an election uh, or poll place. Okay, and my next question is, did you, um, research like the different candidates I got the can like the voting ballot book to help me read the candidates and the articles the proposition um I got the book too uh, I also did some of my own sorry I did some of my own research as well. Okay, and my last question is, um, why do you think it's important to vote? Because you're changing like the world and it's important to get your voice out. Um, I think it's important to vote because, I mean, we, are the people who choose what our future like looks like like our like we're finally being able to get our voices heard um and and i think that especially the new voters are just it's really important to just do your civic duty and and vote instead of just feeling like it doesn't matter because it does, even if you are in a very democratic or republican state, um, the the props matter, the the other things matter in local government as well. Like everything, it does matter. Um, it, you're putting an input into what happens in the world. some of Carver's students voted in the 2020 election. So our next segment will be on how Carver Hub students celebrated Halloween this year. Everyone, welcome to Carver Hub. This is our first broadcast of the year. It is on Zoom because if you don't know, there is a virus going on right now and we cannot go in person. So I am going to be walking around asking questions about Halloween. Like, what did you do, and how was it for you? So, let's start with uh, Ms. Jenks. Ms. Jenks, how was your Halloween? Well, my Halloween was pretty good. Um, we, 
you know, obviously we live with my grandson and he couldn't go out trick-or-treating. So we had a Merlin mystery egg hunt um, with the kids in his little pod. He goes to Sacramento Waldorf and um, they are in person, but it's outside uh, for outdoor classrooms and they have to wear their masks. Um, so we followed the same rules and had an egg hunt and um, it was a lot of fun. Um, so it was, it was dragon eggs and they were on a mission um, to find their grails, which they did. Um, so it was, it was a lot of fun um, just hosting kind of a mystery for second graders to solve. All right, cool. Um, who would, does anyone want to share next or? Uh... I can share. All right. So yes. I actually went to my friend's house. Um, we see each other a lot, so we're not like, we like share the same term. So it was her birthday, so I decided we should hang out. And she's turning 19. Um, oh, well. Fun. We had it was like Halloween. It was kind of like a Halloween themed birthday. And um, yeah, it was really fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we have one of two people either Mayani or Alice so if if you would please take yourself off mute and uh and share I would be happy okay um I didn't do anything on the day of I just got a bunch of candy and ate it um but um oh my cousin actually he came over with my aunt and we watched we tried to watch as many Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies as we could. Um, we only got three three because we had to turn it off because it was kind of too gory. And everyone was like, I don't think we'll be able to sleep tonight. So we got to turn it off. And then November 1st, we actually went through um, a haunted drive through um, That was my first time doing that. And that was a lot of fun. It was really scary. Um, so you could have your windows down as long as you kept your mask on. Uh, so that's what we did. And I got pushed to like the side, which is really scary because my aunt wouldn't let me roll down, roll up the window. So that was a cool experience. Cool. Good. And Alice, how was yours? Uh, it was fun. Uh, normally we go trick or treating with our neighbors, but we couldn't do the, that this year. So instead we just walked around our neighborhood um, neighbors had like set out candy like individually wrapped so we picked some candy up um, there was one house where we walked up and there was a candy bowl and someone sitting behind it and I was like oh whoa like cool mask because we just thought you know someone sitting by the candy bowl that's kind of cool and my dad was there and he's like wait a second what if it's like an actual person and we're like what no way uh -uh. And so my brother like walks up and is like kind of hesitantly walking around and then the guy with the mask says like keep your distance and we're like whoa no way so there was actually someone there which was kind of scary and then we like continued walking and we walked back like 30 minutes later and he was still sitting there like not moving so i thought it was impressive that he could sit there for so long and also scary we didn't all right anything. cool well um my halloween was it was it was okay. It was quiet, but it was it was okay. I mean, I got to beat up a piñata and uh, my friends came over and they have small children, so I, yeah, I got to beat up a piñata with them and that was that was fun. So that's how I got my candy in for that day. Ms. Desiree, how was your Halloween? I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> um, I actually stayed home on Halloween and did nothing. I watched some scary movies and ate popcorn and candy. But I have two kids, which um, one of them stayed with me, my oldest, he's 16, and my youngest went to Hanford, where it's more agriculture. They your, Their numbers are drastically lower. Um, they have no cases currently. So he was able to trick or treat out there. They didn't really have too many restrictions. So um, they, my he went to his uncle's where they live in a small court. So they only trick or treated in the court, but they were handing out a lot of candy. So it was um, little effort and great reward. All right, good to hear from you. Now, my Halloween, as a true person who 
has lived through the coronavirus and should now realize this, my Halloween was pretty quiet. There was not a lot going on. I mean, my four family friends came over, but other than that, it was pretty quiet. I mean, there weren't a whole lot of trick-or-treaters, so you can say mine was pretty good so far, yeah. Very interesting on how Carver Hub students celebrated Halloween this year. So our next segment will be Rory discussing Intersex Awareness Day. Uh, my name is Rory, and I'm here with Carver Hub. Uh, but the topic I'm talking about today actually kind of relates to my GSA work as well. So, um, Monday, October 26th, was Intersex Awareness Day, and I'm really sorry we didn't get a video out in time for it, but, um, what is intersex? So, intersex people are people who are born with a biological sex outside of the male-female binary. You might have been taught that there are only two sexes, so men with XY chromosomes and testosterone, and women with XX chromosomes and estrogen. This is actually scientifically inaccurate. There are a lot of sex variations that can occur in people. Things like being born with XXY chromosomes or being biologically female, but your body producing an excess amount of testosterone. Variations like these make somebody intersex. Because this is biological, intersex people are often in murky positions medically. One of the issues intersex people face is that right now in the United States, it is completely legal for a doctor to do surgery on an intersex child to make their body fit the sex binary without the child's permission. They only require parental consent, and when they operate, they just kind of hope that they pick the right gender for the child. Intersex people are advocating to make this illegal and require hospitals to wait until the child is old enough to give their consent to surgery, if they even want it, and be involved in the process of determining what happens. So please check the description below for petitions to sign and organizations to support. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rory, for that very informative video. And thank you so much for watching, Carver students.